So search criteria, again, we looked at 10 years, clinical factors, thoracic lumbar fracture outcome, Google Scholar resulted in 75, refined, we got 53 articles, PubMed, 21, 42 after removing non-English articles and um, uh, only including the humans. So uh, risk factors analysis of predicting vertebral body recollapse after posterior instrumentation, fusion in thoracic lumbar burst fractures, this was a retrospective study from 2018, and they had two groups uh, in which there was a recollapse, and then there was a well-maintained group. The independent predictors of recollapse after posterior instrumentation for thoracic lumbar burst fractures were age at operation, which was surprisingly um, uh, more than 43 years, and a preoperative body height loss of more than 54. But if you see that this study is coming out of Korea, uh, and I'm so surprised that it's uh, the age is 43. I don't know how they got 43 there. Uh, so even Irfan would be included in, in this study. Yeah. It's very serious there. Anyway, so which patients risk segmental kyphosis after short segment thoracic lumbar fracture fixation with intermediate screws? So same thing that, you know, this prospective data, only 43 patients and had... Uh, uh, AO type A3, A4, and B2 thoracolumbar burst fractures. Uh, potential risk factors, smoking, habit, um, uh, sex, age, neurological, and BMI. And what they found was obesity with BMI of more than 30 had increased risk of one year follow-up like many, many, many studies that we know of. So this is, uh, we know for sure that BMI obesity is uh, one of the risk factors. For, so it's a radiological worsening afterwards, segmental kyphosis, not um, clinical outcome. The relationship between clinical outcome and spontaneous canal remodeling and thoracic lumbar um, fractures. So the degree of reduction, uh, so it's for the prospective uh, data from 2016 World Neurosurgery, they had only 38 patients who had posterior fixation and factors potentially affecting the posterior post-operative uh, degree of reduction, spontaneous canal remodeling were age, location, um, degree of change of anterior vertebral uh, compression ratio, fracture type uh, with retropel pulse bone or not, presence of injury to the posterior longitudinal ligament, and posterior lateral complex fractures. So these, all these factors were, according to them, significant, but uh, the problem was there was no statistically significant data, so it was only 38 patients in the study. So... Um, and they basically said that um, the vertebral body distraction can affect the degree of post-operative reduction and spontaneous bone remodeling. And these factors could um, correlate, but they had no evidence to show that. This is, again, a retrospective study from 2019. Association between surgical, surgical in index, canal compromise, loss of vertebral body height, and severity of spinal cord injury in thoracic lumbar burst fractures. And they showed that uh, patients with spinal, uh, 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 patients with sagittal index more than 20, uh, with canal compromise more than 40, and loss of vertebral body height more than 50 are likely to have more severe neurological injury compared to others. So they could predict what kind of injury these patients would have. But generally, we all of all of us can if you have um, in this scenario. Um, in osteoporotic vertebral compression fractures with mild, moderate uh, uh, fracture severity at the single thoracolumbar level, the intervertebral cement volume of four to six milliliter could relieve pain rapidly. So looking at pain afterwards in osteoporotic fractures, the optimum vertebral fracture percent was uh, 19.7, which could achieve set satisfactory cement distribution. The increase of um, this vertebral fracture percentage, the incidence of cement leakage would also increase. But again, there is no... Um, there's only 130 patients divided, uh, all the prospective, but unable to come up with a single significant uh, outcome. Another retrospective, 153 patients, and uh, they're looking at clinical radiological factors affecting progressive collapse of acute osteoporotic compression spinal fractures. So looking at uh, specifically type A fractures. So they found a significant correlation between patient age, final height loss, height loss difference and kyphotic angle differences, uh, they, they were significant. Height loss and kyphotic angle difference were uh, significantly correlated type of fracture according to AO. The height loss difference was 18% in A1, 27% in A2, and 24% in type three uh, type fractures and 25 in A4 type fractures. 
Having said that, again, these were not statistically significant, um, this specific um, um, group. Three months follow-up of conservative treatment for acute osteoporotic fractures, age, and your spine classification were predictive factors for progressive collapse. And uh, this was uh, statistically significant for a specific um, uh, age group. So factors affecting postural um, reduction in posterior surgery for thoracolumbar burst fractures. Uh, again, this is from 2015. And this was postural um, reduction plays an important role in the reduction of kyphosis and compressive uh, compression deformity after thoracolumbar burst fractures. It was affected by delayed operation time, burst split time uh, type of injury and severe anterior vertebral um, compression. So they were just looking at that at the time of surgery, postural re reduction would work or not. So this was um, the specific thing they were looking at. Again, the number of patients, not very low, not statistically significant. Uh, supplementing uh, posterior instrumentation was deemed necessary in 10% of cases following anterior recompression fusion. Uh, age was the only significant factor that they found in this group. Uh, looking at predictive factors for neurological improvement. So Asia graded admission, fracture type, anatomical location of the injury and preoperative neurological status and the fracture type confirmed a positive predictive value. So these were uh, predictive factors that have been shown by two studies and both of them have shown that these um, um, had the predictive factors for neurological improvement afterwards. So depending on how severe your problem was neurologically, radiologically, your outcome was like that. So it's, it's understood that it has to be a true statement. So injury severity score and outcome of early stabilization, again, the damage control thing in polytrauma, 166 polytrauma patients, two groups according to injury to operation, and they looked at four groups according to injury severity score. So if the two groups according to the injury to operation, so shorter hospital stay, ICU and ventilator days uh, was significant. Uh, patient with moderate to severe injury, ISS more than 26. Um, early stabilization showed shorter hospital stay, intensive care, and ventilator days uh, than the patient with mild to moderate injury. Polytrauma patients whose fracture was stabilized with uh, 70, within 72 hours had better clinical outcome than those with late stabilization. Severely injured patients benefited more from early stabilization. So if we then this was basically showing that obviously if you uh, had operated early in moderate to severe injuries, with um, um, early stabilization, you could improve outcome. And those polytrauma patients whose spine fractures were stabilized within 72 hours had better clinical outcome. The severely injured patients benefited more from early stabilization as well. So uh, looking at increased sagittal vertical axis associated with less effective control of acute pain following vertebroplasty. So it was single level acute osteoporotic uh, compression fracture. And they showed that uh, uh, and vertebroplasty was more effective for acute pain control than conservative treatment, regardless of age, BMI, medical comorbidity, presence of previous fractures, pain duration, bone mineral density, degree of vertebral body compression, canal encroachment, and kyphotic cob angulation. So their thing was that if you did vertebroplasty, it was um, no matter what uh, kind of uh, problem you had, you had improvement. And you had, uh, it was less favorable if you had a problem with kyphosis. Um, and unfortunately, again, this study did not have that many numbers to come up with statistical significance. So um, uh, obesity risk worsening of segmental kyphosis. There is level evidence three. So, sorry, I'm just going to this is these are the statements. And so let's me just put them as statements. How do you do this? Yeah. Segmental kyphosis following following falling surgery for thoracolumbar burst fracture actually it's for all types of fractures burst osteoporotic uh, thoracolumbar burst fracture yes no Emma, shall we vote on this? Yeah. Okay. Next. Increasing age, a factor to predict poor outcome in thoracolumbar burst fractures. 
And this is um, poor outcome, meaning recollapse, poor outcome, meaning neurological, poor outcome, meaning multiple injuries. So they were all significant. But this more than 43 is um, interesting for me. I don't know. Increasing age is a risk factor. Oh, it's, it's just a risk fact is a factor to predict poor outcome in thoracolumbar fracture. Okay. Or, or just say full stop. So because we are voting on thoracolumbar burst fractures anyway. Okay, let's vote. And the third. And make that and small. But that, that sentence pro is probably uh, for uh, osteoporotic fractures, isn't it? This is for type A fractures, yeah, osteoporotic. And again, in old age. But they included all these patients. All patients are included. This is a, a Vicaro group came up with this. You will have that poor outcome in any kind of disease you take. If you're taking high dose steroids or uh, you're smoking. Does it depend on the age? No. This, no? Is, this is, we have age, we have already voted. Obviously it is, but uh, smoking and, and you, have, you know, age, old age, you have, you have already mentioned. But in comorbidities, we are talking about smoking and high dose steroids as poor outcome. We can vote on this. You can say high, high dose steroid usage. Or high dose steroids usage predicts poor outcome. Okay. It doesn't matter. You use high dose steroid, you become um, a risk. <laughs> okay. Let's we change that to uh, long term high dose steroids. Let's go back first before we forget. So long term. Yeah. Uh, we just leave it open. You can decide whatever long term you want. No, but it's, it's just to tell you that, yeah, these patients will have more problems have poor outcomes, as long as, you know, you can tell your patients that that's true. Yeah. So polytrauma, high injury severity score is not a contraindication to early surgery. Injury severity score. Yes. Or we can vote on the thing below. Early surgery is favored in polytrauma patients or high injury severity score. So you can say whichever way you want to say. So we put it in bracket, we have already said that, less than 24 hours. Uh, instead of that, I would rather say polytrauma and high injury severity score should not be considered as a contraindication for early surgery. Okay. Should not be, yeah. Considered. Should not be contradiction to early surgery. That is fine. Let's vote on this. As a contraindication, should not be considered. Should not be considered. 
uh, contraindication. Okay. okay. As a contraindication, as a contraindication. Okay, so that's that's done. Professor Hafid Bajamal is next. Thank you.